so welcome back. Time to talk some more about positioning this box. So we're worried about position, display, and float as kind of like our primary three that we're guiding the discussion in. Uh, we already know about display. Now we're going to talk about the position property. And we're going to see what values it has, and then we're going to give you some examples. So the values for position, this one you probably don't know quite as well, uh, the default is what's called static. Static means that you know I'm in the flow. Uh, if I'm an inline element, I ignore my width and height that I'm just there. If I'm a block element, you know, people are above and below me. But I'm very much in the flow. I take up space. This is the default. The next uh, way you can change it is relative. Uh, relative, and we'll see the example for these. Relative is similar to static, except for if you want, you can actually like take up space, but you can actually move yourself um, from that spot a little bit. So it's a relative move from that spot. Those two are, are pretty pretty normal. And then uh, these last two are, are the big ones. And these are ones that are out of the flow. So you'll see that term a lot. So I just wrote it on there. Um, and so these don't necessarily take up any page. They kind of like hover on top. Um, and then absolute and fixed, there's a slight difference in what they're attached to uh, being on top. So let's look at these in terms of examples, because I think that'll stick better than just me saying a bunch of words. Oh, also I wanted to say these are going to make use of, so now that we're doing position, these are also going to make use of um, the location offsets for positioned elements. Uh, you can define like left, top, bottom, right um, to describe where you're at. Interestingly enough, these same words are used very differently if you're relative, so they're like relative to your current location, um, but if you're absolute or fixed, they're relative to your parent, right? So the same property gets used in a very different way depending on what the position property is. And if you're static, they just get ignored, which is funny. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So this example, uh, we're going to start off with static. Uh, they're all going to have a rule for right, uh, a rule for top, and then they're going to have some, some position, right? So in this particular rule, you can see that we've got three boxes that all have these rules set. You'll notice that they're not, they're not moved around at all from like left or right or anything like that. Uh, they are just like you expect them, and that's because static is the default, um, and these other two rules are ignored, right? So if, if, you, if you set the default, nothing changes, and if you have rules that you've added that are ignored, nothing changes. So this is exactly what you expected before. This is static. This is kind of the baseline. Let's talk about one of these other rules. If we made a change, and the only thing we changed was the position to be relative, so if we just change that, there's a lot of things that happen. Um, so specifically, we're, we're only applying this rule to child 2, and you can see that child 2, he still took up the same space he had before, like the, the space that's reserved for him is right here, um, and like other people's margin, it, they, they concerned about where he was there, but what he did is he just magically moved a little bit, he moved 20 pixels to the right, uh, and 20 pixels down, right? Or sorry, I should say, he moved 20 pixels to the left, because he's, got a, uh, he's been moved from the right by 20 pixels. Um, and so you can see that this little relative move, it actually has a lot of value. One place where I've used it recently is I had a little problem in the weather picks. So if you remember this from the, uh, from the unit, uh, whenever I added these two buttons, the rules that I added put it right on top. Um, and I was sure that I could figure out how to add a margin in there and push it up or how to add padding and push it up. But to be honest, I was pretty happy with, with the padding rules overall, and I just didn't want to mess with them. The only thing I wanted is I simply wanted those two buttons to be a few pixels higher, right? And so the way I did that is I just uh, set the position, uh, which was static before, to relative. Once I made it relative, then I could use those location offsets, um, and I did a top of minus 7, uh, and you can see that that did exactly what I wanted. It just bumped it up a little bit. In fact, if you wanted, you could go to my, my WeatherPix web app. Uh, you could expect, inspect element on these guys. Um, and if you get the, uh, the one with the edit actions class on it, you can see here's that position relative. And you can see that if I turn it off, um, then all of a sudden my top of negative 7 is ignored. Note that whenever I say something's ignored, it's still set on the element. It's just when Chrome goes to render it, it just never looks at that value. And so that's true of, of all things when I say they're ignored. Right? So if we uh, have a relative, then it respects top. Obviously, you could take the word top off uh, as well. Uh, but I think Chrome Dev Tools are really neat uh, to see the effects of rules. So I just thought I'd bring that up yet again uh, to show you position relative. Still two more. Uh, so the next one is absolute. 
absolute is a big change. Uh, so the reason it's a big change is because it pulls something out of the flow, right? So you can see that we, we took box two, so this is a rule only applied to box two. We changed only one property, we changed its position to absolute, and that makes a substantial change. So some of the things that, were hap that happened is that there was no space reserved for it. Um, this box did actually get smaller, um, and it got pulled out of the flow. Now, to be honest, it's not entirely out of the flow, because you'll notice that it's actually still in its parent, um, and it's actually got a, um, a value for top and right uh, that put it on there. So that top and right uh, got, got observed. Notice they behaved entirely different than how relative did. Relative moved it relative to where it would have been uh, in the position it should have taken up. This time it's relative to its parent. Um, I say that it's relative to its parent, but it's not actually relative to its parent. It's relative to its nearest parent that is positioned. Um, and if you're positioned, uh, that means that you are relative or absolute, um, but such that you could be positioned relative to your parent. If uh, So this blue box here uh, must be positioned in this, in this example. If it was not um, positioned, it would have snapped to the top of the page, uh, which would have been the winner. So that's absolute. There's one more that's similar to absolute, but slightly different, and that is fixed. So fixed, you can see, um, moves relative to the page, so it doesn't care about parents at all. It is like completely on its own. It's almost like there are just two independent overlapping pages here, right? There's, there's this guy that's fixed, and then there's the main page. Um, and to be honest, they don't even recognize one another. And if you go open this guy up, uh, he's in the code used in lecture position property fixed. And what I want to show you is that there's also a difference in terms of how it moves when you scroll. So here I've got the example up, and you can see that box two is just where it was in the image. But the important thing about fixed uh, is you can see that as I move the screen, um, I mean, it's fixed, right? I mean, pretty good name for that term uh, because it is not part of the page at all. If you were to open up the uh, absolute one, so here's the absolute one, you can see the absolute does move with the page, right? So absolute and fixed, they're both interesting in that they pull things out of the flow, but they are very different in terms of their scroll behavior. So they're similar, but they're unique for who they lock to as their parent. You can also see an example of uh, fixed if you're looking at bootstrap. So for example, there's a couple different nav bars, uh, and those nav bars are um, default, which is not interesting to us at all, static on top, so you can see static scrolls with the page, um, but if you switch over to fixed, um, you can see that it stays locked on top. And if you wanted to, I mean, you know, you could play the same game. You could inspect element on this guy. And if you were to find the uh, the nav bar, uh, so the one that has the nav bar fixed top on it, um, and you were to look at his properties, uh, you're going to find in here, there it is, you're going to find this position fixed. Um, and in fact, if you took it off, um, you can kind of see in my background there, it makes a substantial ex a difference uh, on whether this thing is visible or not uh, because I'm scrolled down a little bit. Um, so that's another example of fixed. So if I was trying to summarize these things, you've got your default, uh, which is static, uh, and then you've got relative, uh, which is positioned, so they're all positioned. Um, and then you've got your, your two that are out of the flow, right? So this pulls it out of the flow, which means it, it does not take up any space in the page, right? And then with fixed, you've even got the feature of no scroll, right? So pretty easy uh, to understand in isolation. The really interesting thing happens uh, when you start um, comparing what happens with displays and, and positions. And you can see pretty quickly, you've got a four by four matrix of uh, interactions. That's gonna be one of the things that we spend a lot of time talking about in this lecture. But before we kind of get into all the details, uh, let's have you think about, if you were to see something, so you're about to see a bunch of things in, in this example, how do you decide what it is? And the questions you should ask yourself is, is it in the flow? Meaning, does it take up space? Do other people respect it? And then, you know, if it is in the flow, is it in the location where it should be, or is it moved? Um, and then if it's not in the flow, you know, is it relative to the page, or is it relative uh, to its nearest position parent? Um, and so those are some of the questions you can ask. And what you're going to do is you're going to do a series of examples. I'll go ahead and start you off with them a little bit, but I love these examples. So if you're going to take some examples seriously, take these seriously. Try, try really hard to, to get these things worked out. 
if you click on this link, uh, it will take you to the lab, and if you scroll down to the project setup, uh, it'll say, you know, this is where you can get the material, which we've already downloaded, right? Um, it recommends that you go ahead and add some rules to your main.py, uh, just so you've got those links. So what the heck, I'll go ahead and do that, just because I'll forget if I don't do it right now. So in the CSS tracks area, I'm just going to paste on uh, these two additional things. You'll notice that I pasted on um, two exercises uh, when we're only doing one, and that's because I went ahead and pasted on the uh, float exercises. Uh, so hopefully I typed in the name of that folder right, uh, and there are three exercises on both of these guys. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, do these exercises. These exercises all start from the same starting code, uh, but then they do very different things uh, depending on how you're setting uh, not just display and position, uh, but how you're setting the support properties like left, right, top, bottom, and how you're setting the values from the box model, which was size, width, padding, border, margin. Um, so we've kind of got a lot of, we, we've quickly got a lot of properties uh, together. And so we're going to start with, uh, with the same page. Uh, here's what the page looks like by default. So we've got these three boxes, uh, box one, box two, and box three. You're going to set a rule on box one, box two, and box three. Um, and in one example, you also have to set a rule in the container. Um, remember that, uh, that position parent thing. Um, but in general, you're just going to be setting these rules. All of these boxes have a, a height and a width set on them of 100 wide, 50 tall. So you can kind of see that in the image. And sometimes it'll get preserved, sometimes it won't get preserved, uh, but that depends on how display and position uh, interact with these rules. So for example, for exercise zero, uh, you're going to try to make a page that looks like this. I recommend you kind of open up uh, Chrome with two tabs, one with like the, the target solution and then one with your work. Uh, and then as you make changes, uh, you can see if it matches. All right, I'll cut this video off here and I'll let you go work those exercises. They should be really, really informative. See you next time.